Welcome everyone to a new episode of Pala Spotlight Webinars. Um, so we're based in Bangkok, so I would say good afternoon here from here from Bangkok, but maybe good morning or good evening wherever you are based. Um, we hope you're all safe and um, take care of yourselves. Uh, today, the topic of the webinar is food waste in hospitality, misunderstandings and solutions. And we have partnered up with our PADA member, Light Blue Consulting, Environmental Consulting. And the speaker for today is Benjamin uh, LeFillebert. I hope I pronounced that correctly. Um, he will be um, presenting in a few moments. Um, so for today's webinar, um, just a few things before we start. As usual, we will have a Q&A session at the end of the webinar. So please feel free to submit your questions um, throughout the webinar in the Q&A box. So there is a special Q&A box. Um, don't, please don't use the chat box because it just makes it easier for us to um, then separate the questions for the, the session later. Um, I know a lot of the attendees always ask the question whether the presentation is available um, after the webinar. So the presentation is available on our YouTube channel. Um, everyone who registered will get a link with, to the webinar recording in the next few days. And PADA members will also receive um, a copy of the presentation after the webinar as well. Um, so yes, I think without further ado, we can jump into um, welcoming Ben uh, Benjamin from Light Blue Environmental Consulting. Hi, Ben. Uh, Hi, everyone. We can hear you now. Yes, thank you for, for welcoming me. Hi, everyone. Hi. Yes, um, so I also, before we uh, continue, I forgot to introduce myself. I'm sorry, guys. So um, my name is Rung Tip Gail. I'm the membership engagement manager at PADA. Um, I take care of our members. So if you have any questions, if you are a member, just feel free to reach out to the to me or the team. Um, and um, yeah, that's it. And Benjamin, as you can see here on the slide, is the founder and managing director of Light Blue Environmental Consulting. And um, I think I will hand over to him and let him say a few words um, about himself and uh, Light Blue Environmental Consulting and then um, start with the presentation. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you very much, Rung. Thanks. Hello, everyone. So let me, uh, let me share my screen um, to see if everything is working well. This is always a nice challenge. <laughs> So, can you see it? Um, can you see it fine? Um, right now, it's not in presentation mode. And now? It's not. Um, yes, perfect. Now it's working. Okay, great. So, um, yeah, thank you, uh, thank you, Rung, for 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 this uh, this introduction. Um, so, I'm uh, Benjamin Lefebvre. I'm the uh, the managing director of Light Blue Environmental Consulting. Um, Light Blue is um, is a consulting, capacity building, and technology company uh, that I started about uh, about eight years ago. And uh, since 2013, uh, uh, we have been focusing. Uh, almost exclusively on uh, food waste prevention. Um, why? Because um, before I was I was uh, involved uh, uh, in uh, in sustainability in the hospitality sector, but I would say from uh, from a more uh, uh, 360 perspective, uh, we were looking at energy, water, waste, chemicals, local communities, uh, staff awareness, guest engagement uh, for hotels in particular. And, uh, and then one day, uh, kind of one day came that, that, uh, that uh, epiphany, the moment where um, I was looking at a bin that was full of food and, um, and I was stumped. I was, just, uh, I was just puzzled to see that much food uh, in only one location. And, and I started to ask uh, some questions to, uh, 
to uh, professionals uh, uh, from the, uh, the culinary uh, uh, departments. Um, and those, I would say, rather naive questions uh, were simply, well, how much, how much food goes to that bin? And, and, and where is it coming from? And, and what is it and why? And, and how much does it cost you? And I was still, uh, and I am still uh, amazed uh, not to say, uh, uh, um, yeah, I'm rather speechless to, uh, to see that um, most of the, uh, the industry players are kind of still okay with not having answers to those questions. So that all started uh, this way. And then uh, uh, started to dig. Um, so 2013, there was hardly anything uh, available. There was, there was no studies, there was no article, it was not a topic. Uh, basically, even for the general public or for professionals, no benchmarking system um, and only a few, uh, a few tools. So decided to uh, use those basic tools, build a methodology, convince one hotel to, uh, to let me try it on in the back of house. And that's how we got started. Uh, that, was, uh, that was a very, uh, a very challenging journey. Uh, uh, I would love to, uh, to, uh, to tell a story uh, of... Uh, of um, easy, easy going walk through the park, uh, but that was not the case. It was tough. It was tough and challenging, but definitely rewarding because uh, this issue, as we will see today, is a major global issue that must be addressed. And so far, um, very little is being done to, uh, to uh, actually um, um, address and minimize food waste. So light blue, we have been uh, involved in roughly 45 projects since 2013. Um, you recognize most of those, uh, those icons. Um, we work predominantly with hotels, restaurants, and we work more and more with development agencies, international organizations, uh, universities as well, uh, culinary institutes, um, basically everywhere where food is, is potentially uh, uh, being prepared, served, because this is a gigantic uh, problem, and, and we, we need to, uh, to get a lot of people uh, involved. Um, so to, to uh, zoom back for a second, uh, I'll zoom out. Uh, what I learned through this journey is to go back to the basics, the essentials, is the fact that food connects everything. Here we have this, uh, this, this, uh, this visual designed by, by Stockholm Resilience uh, Institute that I really enjoy because if we look at the history of the, uh, what was called the, the Millennium Development Goals in the 2000s, then the 2015, we had the Sustainable Development Goals, which are represented here. We, we you realize that food is actually this, this transversal uh, uh, element that connects all of the 17 SDGs from the biosphere level to the society level to the economy level, all the way to partnerships. And I think it's fundamental uh, to remember that, uh, well, we eat three times a day and the food that is arriving on our plate is not something that we should take too much for granted um, because it has played um, essential roles pivotal roles in, in any, I would say, uh, uh, rise and collapse of, of various empires and, and, uh, and throughout the history, it's uh, it always has been central. So this visual is one, one of, of my favorites. But going into the, uh, the heart of the topic of today, uh, uh, why, why is food waste an issue? Because we realized there was a lot of, of misunderstanding around, around food waste uh, in particular. So. First, it's important to remember, many of you have heard it before, but, but just to go back to the basics, we estimate that roughly one third of all food uh, uh, um, that is produced worldwide is, is lost or wasted, or wasted. That's 1.3 billion tons. When you know that at the same time, there is approximately 850 million that are either undernourished or, uh, or uh, that do not have access to proper food, here we are stressing the fact that it's not only uh, famine, it's as well uh, uh, the lack of access to uh, uh, quality, nutritious food that shows that there is a serious underlying uh, issue in, in our food systems. And, and food waste is one representation of, uh, of those, I would say, structural issues. Um, so it is, it is completely immoral to know that, that there are some people that are starving while we are wasting so much. That's more like uh, on the uh, on the uh, uh, social perspective. From from an environmental perspective, 
Uh, it's important to uh, to remember as well that food waste is it's estimated that food waste represent eight percent of all global green greenhouse gas emissions. And if food waste were a country, it would be the third largest emitter of, of carbon emission uh, after China and the uh, <clears throat> and the US. So it's a massive, massive issue. Um, the other uh, aspect uh, on the environmental side uh, that must be really understood, well understood about, about food waste is when you throw food away, you're throwing away all the resources needed to produce, transport, package, transform, serve, and then dispose of this food. So it's not, it's not just the apple, it's all the effort that we're put throughout the, uh, throughout from the moment you sow the seed to the moment you actually dispose the apple, you have all the resources that are lost. So the FAO uh, uh, estimate that um, globally food waste uh, represents uh, the equivalent of wasting 19% of all fertilizers, 18% of cropland, 21% of landfill volume is, uh, is made of, of food waste, and approximately 21% of all fresh water. So with the uh, climate change that is uh, about to, well, that is already hitting us, and that will, that will keep on being more intensive and, and, and more devastating, uh, we can't afford to waste that much food. It's uh, it's we are we are we are shooting ourselves in the foot. From a financial perspective as well, this is this was one of the reason why we uh, we we focus initially uh, being in a, a business business solution provider, is uh, is the fact that it's a dramatic uh, business opportunity to address food waste. So BCG Boston Consulting Group uh, has published that study a couple of years back showing that they call it the 1.5 trillion problem. But at the same time, they call it the 700 billion opportunity. And I would like to, uh, to uh, get your attention on, on this uh, first line. They are ranking the five most, I would say, promising uh, uh, ways to, uh, to address food waste. And the top line is about awareness. It sounds too simple to be true, but actually this is something that we see throughout uh, uh, the different, I mean, different region, different context, different segment of the, of the hotels or different partners that we work with, is this initial awareness, this initial understanding of why food waste is such a problem. And by changing this understanding and changing perspective, there is already so much that can be done. We see as well, there is a clear uh, 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 shift in, in uh, I would say, from the investment perspective. There are some, some studies uh, such as the one from WRI uh, that has helped uh, businesses to understand there is uh, a, a superb opportunity in addressing food waste. So they publish various uh, studies such as this one showing that for every $1 invested, there is a $14 uh, return. And you see as well, like all on the, uh, on the investment side, this tech startup and, and where is the money going, we we'll see a dramatic increase of investment poured into startups that are re related to, to food, to waste, to tech food and agro tech uh, um, uh, recently, uh, understanding that there is, uh, there is a gigantic opportunity out there. So this is kind of to lay the foundation of, of why food waste is such, is such a problem. Uh, from a social, environmental, and, and uh, financial perspective. Now, what I think is really at the heart of, of, our, of our conversation today is to share from our perspective why has this issue been so slow and why it is still not on the top of the priority list or part of the priority list of the, uh, the hospitality uh, uh, players. There are five misunderstandings that we identified. It's not an exhaustive uh, list, but it helps to kind of uh, understand this, this problem a bit better. First one is misunderstanding about the priority order. This is the food waste pyramid uh, that explains what are the, the priority actions that should be taken to address food waste. Worst option is what 95% plus plus of, of all players in industry are doing, is just throwing it in the bin, usually mixed with other waste, and then it goes to the landfill. That's the worst case. That's what generates methane. It's, a, it's, a, it's the worst uh, uh, possible option. What is interesting is to look at what are the other options available throughout this, this, this pyramid from transforming, upcycling, or waste to energy, waste to compost, uh, to feeding animal, and especially animal that would enter the, uh, the food chain, the human food chain, feeding people. And the top, which is the one we've been focusing, is the prevention. Why do we put it as a misunderstanding here is the misunderstanding that uh, 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 
many hotels or restaurants are, uh, let's say, donating some of the food surplus or uh, doing a bit of a compost and would then say that, okay, it's fine, we have been addressing this issue. Clearly not. Uh, this, this is one of the visual that, that should be really understood. Second misunderstanding is what we call the perception gap. We hear uh, uh, all the time, well, it seems that we don't have much food waste. It looks like we don't have much food waste. And what we have seen uh, on and on throughout uh, those 45 projects over the past seven years is that hotels or restaurants that do not have a proper comprehensive food waste monitoring system tend to underestimate the, amount, the, the volume of food being wasted by a factor of three to eight. So they believe they, th they waste three to eight times less than what the situation is simply because they never properly uh, uh, monitored it. The third misunderstanding is what we call the knowledge gap. Uh, knowledge gap is this uh, misunderstanding, and this one is, is, is probably the most, uh, 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 the biggest misunderstanding uh, uh, of all, is the fact that, oh, I control food waste, or I don't have food waste, uh, I don't have buffet, so I'm, I'm controlling my, my food waste very well, because it's all a la carte. What we see systematically, is that 50% of all volume of food uh, waste generated is happening at the pre-consumer level. Um, and food waste generated from the buffet is only 10 to 15% of all food waste. That means that it's a fraction of what is really happening, especially for large hotels that have multiple uh, uh, locations. Uh, looking at buffet waste is only a fraction of uh, uh, addressing the, uh, the issue. Fourth misunderstanding, it's more like structural, is the, the indicators used in the industry. Typically, the industry is using the food cost percentage as one of the key indicator to define are they doing well financially and are, are their operation uh, efficient. Food cost percentage is basically a ratio between how much was spent to purchase food divided by sales. Usually in the industry, uh, if you have a good food cost percentage, uh, it, it tends to be understood that, okay, there is nothing much that could be done. And we, we heard that a lot. Oh, it's okay. Uh, good food cost percentage. We, we probably control food waste very well. It may be true and it may not. If you sell high enough, you are basically hiding the cost of food being lost in, in, your, in, your, in your pricing. What we see is between 25 to 40, up to 42% of all food purchase in volume that is lost at some point from the moment it arrives at the back of house to the moment it reaches the, uh, the customer, which is massive. And the last misunderstanding is about uh, uh, the, uh, the cost. There is this, uh, this belief that uh, food waste, the cost of food waste is marginal. That is just uh, a, a, a tiny fraction and that it can't really make a dent on, on your overall uh, profitability. And what we see is that in general, we see between, uh, we calculate that food, the cost of food waste represent between roughly five to 14% of the revenue. And here I'm talking about the revenue, which is a gigantic amount of money, depending on the volume, but for any, any owner uh, to understand this should be kind of, of a, a, a wake up call that food waste must be addressed urgently from purely from a financial perspective. So those are the five misunderstandings. What we wanted to share with you uh, today is some of the existing solutions that we have been developing. Uh, again, it's not like we don't pretend that we have uh, answers to, uh, to, uh, to all the, uh, the challenges that food waste represent in the industry. Um, however, uh, those are our, our tools or, or solutions that we spend a lot of time on, fine tuning, adjusting, and the first part I would like to share with you is about the technology. Technology is fundamental because the technology is helping to address those misunderstandings, uh, some of them that I, I presented earlier, about going away from the gut feeling that, oh, we don't have that much, it doesn't cost us much, to, okay, let's face it, let's have a comprehensive food waste monitoring system that help us to understand how much, when, where, what, why. Those questions, if you can't answer them, you can't address your issue. So we have developed a simple system, uh, uh, simple in, in the way uh, you can uh, deploy it, uh, composed of two different elements, an Android app and uh, a data analytics software. Uh, we received recently, uh, that's a moment of pride, uh, we received recently the Solar Impulse uh, Efficient Solution uh, uh, label uh, uh, last month, a month and a half ago 
which we were very, very happy about. Why, why a food waste monitoring system should be comprehensively covering your operation? Because for the same reason I mentioned earlier, if you are focusing on your all the dining, here in that case, the buffet uh, 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 restaurant, you are not looking at the entirety of your operation. This is typically a big hotel and the number of location where food is either being stored, transformed, served or disposed of. And if you don't have a proper system to capture all those areas, you are limiting your, your understanding of, uh, of the, 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 the severity of the leakage that food waste represents. And having a, a system that relies, such as the one we developed on generic tablets uh, that can be used as data entry points in those various locations helps you to get a comprehensive understanding of the food waste issue throughout your operation. So there are those two components in the app, as I mentioned, that you use as a data entry point in the different recording points. And then the software uh, that we call the brain that will give you information and answers to those questions I was referring to, the how much, when, where, what, why. Why you have those answers, you know where you should put your effort to reduce food waste and basically improve uh, your overall performance. An example of, of a large deployment of, uh, of this, uh, this technology uh, is, uh, is currently a project with, uh, with GIZ, uh, uh, which is called Related. Uh, pretty exciting, uh, covering four different countries, 50 hotels and restaurants, where we, uh, we are um, helping to train local consultants on food waste monitoring system, how you implement that in kitchens, in commercial kitchens, how do you use the technology, how you accompany restaurants and hotels that are using the technology so they can uh, uh, get a good understanding of where they are now and how can they reduce, how can they improve uh, uh, as well, like to be more, uh, more profitable. Um, this, is, this is something we, uh, we, are, uh, we just started uh, recently and we'll be happy to share the, uh, the result with you uh, uh, very soon. The second type of, of solution, uh, once you have uh, this monitoring system, so monitoring system is important. Um, what we have been co-designing is this uh, benchmarking and certification system called the Pledge on Food Waste. Pledge on Food Waste is uh, designed to have a right system in place, some sort of a methodology uh, to um, ensure that all the, the, the right preventive measures are in place within your operation has been designed for restaurants, hotels, and canteen, uh, has been endorsed by, by some of those, uh, those uh, uh, leading organization. And it's, um, I, would, I would call it a, a holistic methodology to control food waste. It's composed of 95 criteria uh, articulated around seven key pillars. Uh, there is the pillar related to process documentation, what is the policy, the action plans, uh, where does the, uh, the restaurant wanna go, um, employee commitment is one of the key elements. Uh, you cannot uh, uh, leave the, uh, the, uh, this issue in the hand on only one person. We heard that a lot in the past. Uh, oh, chef, food waste, this is, this is your issue. This is, this is all in the kitchen. We have nothing to do. It doesn't work this way, or at least you can't achieve the same results uh, if you do it alone or if you do it as a team and with other key departments. So that's, that's one of the, uh, the components. The third uh, pillar is about food waste monitoring, whatever monitoring it could be, uh, uh, from the most advanced technical, uh, techno technological uh, system that exists to do food waste monitoring to the most basic one, paper-based, uh, to keep track of, of what is lost in the kitchen and coming back from the customer. The fourth and the fifth pillar are basically a set of best practices uh, or best procedures that should be in place at each of those locations where food is potentially being lost or wasted from, as I mentioned, from the moment the food is received to the moment it is dispatched, uh, the moment it is being stored, uh, uh, prepared, portioned, uh, cooked, served. And uh, this set of, of best practices or best procedures helps to control each of those steps and minimize the amount that is, that is potentially lost. Then there are two interesting components. Customer engagement is to me really what what will come up next in terms of trends? How can organizations, restaurants uh, engage their diners in uh, being more responsible when they eat while not compromising their, 
their, uh, their satisfaction, quite the opposite. To provide them a feel-good factor that they are choosing restaurants that have preventive measures in place. So that's this, uh, this uh, added, uh, added value. And the third component, which I will develop a bit, is the post-consumer side. Once all the preventive measures has been done internally within your reach, within your organization, what can your organization do then to turn around to look at who are the other food waste solution providers that can help you in your, uh, I would say, uh, ambition to reach zero food waste to landfill. And that should be one of these clear uh, objectives for, for a food industry uh, professional and not something that is far-fetched, really, really not. Zero food waste to landfill is an achievable uh, objective. Interesting aspect we will see in the in the short testimony video is that you achieve different levels uh, out of the certification depending on your score out of 100. Some of the uh, the, the criteria are are uh, compulsory. I would say uh, there are 78 of them out of 95 that are compulsory, and then you have some that are bonus. And those bonus criteria helps to identify those that go the extra mile, and you reach several steps, which is pretty uh, I would say pretty classic. What is interesting is the benchmarking uh, uh, part of this system. And to be able to benchmark with a very specific percentage uh, the performance of your different business uh, units, let's say your restaurant group or hotel group, and you wanna know how well they are doing using this sort of uniformed uh, uh, approach that a third party verified by an auditor, enables you to identify which one are doing well uh, according to a very comprehensive set of, of criteria. But zooming out and looking at the big picture of food waste, I would say more from a destination perspective, what we really enjoy related to the, uh, the, the food waste solution providers uh, 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 pillar is that uh, by enabling the, uh, the pledge on food waste, it is as well helping to foster the local ecosystem of food waste solution providers. Those food waste solution providers may be actually uh, offering solutions at different level of that food waste pyramid that uh, I showed you earlier. And those would be, for instance, app. Uh, some of them are very, uh, are, are now globally known, like uh, Too Good To Go, uh, Kalma, Olio. We have some local champions like Indy that are coming up. Uh, that could be technology being uh, automated, uh, uh, AI driven uh, food waste monitoring systems. Uh, or other uh, technology that helps to, uh, to better control uh, uh, food waste at the storage level, for instance. That could be service providers, um, thinking here in particular about all the food rescue organizations that uh, would have uh, a benefit of having more restaurants to implement the pledge so they can offer their services. And the same, the benefit then for the restaurants uh, is that they can gain uh, additional points. And the last one is, I would say, all the other players uh, those that provide uh, a, a solution like uh, for animal feed and all the, the new trends that are coming up, uh, such as the uh, insect farms uh, uh, for alternative to, alternative to um, animal protein uh, that could benefit as well from those restaurants or those organizations entering this, uh, this uh, uh, program and uh, this objective to reach zero food waste to landfill. I'm going to share this very quick uh, one minute uh, uh, video with you, and then I will conclude with the last, the last part of this presentation. It's a paradigm shift. We have produced waste forever. Everybody does. Mm -hmm. The good thing is we have something in place. So the way we do business now is exactly the way we, we should by reducing our uh, footprints and to uh, as the world is now changing, there's more benefits for what we are doing with the pledge. We're, we're happy that we got the highest score of any hotel, I believe, in the world on the pledge. So yep. we, really, we really took it to heart. I don't know exactly if you got the, the sound. I hope you did. Uh, uh, Rung, let me know if that was not the case for, for the other uh, video. So. Food waste monitoring system is one thing. The uh, um, certification, or as I would call it, methodology, such as the pledge on food waste, help you to guide you through the different steps necessary to have, uh, to have a comprehensive uh, food waste prevention system and reach zero food waste to landfill. But obviously, you need to build capacity of your team 
uh, if you want to achieve a, a serious uh, uh, result. So there is an entire component that I would say has always been part of the uh, the solution when working with different uh, uh, different uh, uh, partners, which is building their understanding. So the same way we started this presentation with explaining why is food waste such an issue, this is exactly the steps that you should go through if you're running a restaurant, a hotel, a canteen, or any food service. Um, you should start with this with your own team. If you tell them tomorrow we're going to address food waste, they're going to look at you like, yeah, well, why? Uh, I, you know, food. Uh, well, there's plenty of food. Food can be uh, can be transformed, can be composted. It's not a problem. If you start with very simple uh, awareness raising video, that's already helped them to shift this, their perspective. And this is really like something you would like to uh, to uh, to achieve. Um, it is always and, and obviously the lowest uh, possible investment that you can uh, you can make, but already helped to uh, to get the low the low hanging fruits. Um, I just need to know uh, if. The uh, the sound was actually going through uh, during the, uh, the the video. Otherwise, uh, uh, room, can you tell me if the uh, the the video was actually uh, uh, the sound was? Yes. Everybody could hear it. Yes, we could hear it. Fantastic. Okay, so I can close that down. So we have been developing, and that, I would say thanks to COVID. And I know it's hard to put thanks and COVID in the same uh, in the same sentence, but uh, when COVID started to uh, to hit us and the entire industry uh, worldwide, uh, we decided to, uh, to take a moment to think and look back at what we've been doing over the past seven years and to structure all our knowledge into practical uh, technical workshops. You see that photo when I'm, where I'm smiling like a bit like ridiculously on this, on this picture. It's exactly where I'm staying right now. And this is where we've been uh, spending uh, uh, dozens and dozens of hours recently to share this knowledge uh, with professionals, with government agencies, with international organizations, officers, consultants, lecturers. I'll get, just share this, this quick video that gives an overview of, of uh, what are the, uh, what is the component and how, how does it, uh, how does it- look? Food waste represents 44% of all the waste we produce. And that topic, which is dramatic, don't get me wrong, has uh, succeeded to eat the headlines. Now we see more and more companies, governments, citizens, uh, ready to take on that challenges, which is amazing. Nothing comes like for granted. Uh, and there is so much that is put into whatever we have in our place. This is to me one of the most important visual uh, educational material that should be used in the context of food waste. We're gonna break out into uh, the groups that you were actually representing. I strongly recommend you to enroll in the second batch of this course. You're going to learn an awful lot of things about how to tackle with food waste. It's not just a webinar, it's much more than that. It's a full course where you get trained, like really trained by professionals, by people who have already a very strong knowledge in this field, a unique knowledge almost, uh, we can say like a, a worldwide unique knowledge. And they are the leader in this field. So do it, enroll. <laughs> Well, I, uh, this, this video is, Food waste. I know. Um, this is an overview of what we call the full course. I'm sharing this because what we see as a, as, um, as an extremely exciting opportunity is the bridges that we're starting to build with, uh, organizations that we were not working with, uh, earlier or, or even like six months ago. Recently, we had a chance to work, uh, to train actually 16 lecturers from a, a public university in Singapore uh, that are from the Faculty of Sustainability and the other faculty from, from tourism and hospitality, which I think that is fundamental. If you want the industry to start shifting towards more like responsible practice, it has to start from education, but it cannot start from education if your teachers, the lecturers, are not aware about what are the latest trends, what are the things that work that do not work, case studies and all this knowledge that is now available, but that should go back into the educational field. So this is, this is why we think it's extremely promising and exciting to, to tighten those bonds with uh, higher education, culinary uh, institutes, 
and all those involved into training the future leader of that industry. So they can get at least, you can sow that seed from the moment there will be managers and then, and then leaders within five, 10, 15 years, they would be aware of this and that can make a serious, a serious change. We have other modules that are more specific uh, with different angles around food waste from how you engage your team to how you communicate. Uh, we train as well uh, a consultant now in, in, uh, in nine or 10 different countries on, on, uh, uh, about the pledge. So being accredited consultant on the pledge on food waste so they can build their businesses and their network and getting more uh, businesses involved in the pledge on food waste while nurturing the local ecosystem of uh, food waste solution providers. And this is, this is where we wanna go. Finally, to uh, conclude my, uh, my presentation, uh, impact. What is the impact of all this? Um, couple of examples. So typical uh, impact uh, of action on hotels. So two, two key components from the financial perspective. Uh, usually we, we aim on average for 5% reduction in cost per cover and reduction between 25 to 35 plus percent on what, what we are looking at, which is in particular food waste per cover. So cost per cover on one side and food waste per cover on the other. A couple of, of uh, case studies here uh, with Pullman in, in Bangkok, JW Marriott uh, in Phuket, where we are always uh, putting forward, okay, what are the business benefits for the users? What we keep in mind, because this is what initially uh, uh, has uh, driven us into that business is, can we help them improve their performance while reducing the overall impact? And again, the impact of food waste uh, from an environmental perspective is just ridiculously high. So this is an example of, of, example of uh, impact on hotel. This is as well another exciting project we were involved in uh, exactly uh, 12 months ago with a Michelin guide in Thailand uh, as uh, we are a technical sustainability partner. We helped them on the Michelin style revelation event uh, in Bangkok when they announced the, uh, the, the restaurant that are uh, uh, getting uh, stars. And we have been implementing all these preventive measures and uh, assist them to ensure that all the food that was actually prepared but not served to customer and still uh, edible would be collected with our partners from uh, SOS, Color of Sustenance, so it can be redistributed. So we trained five Michelin star chefs, 35 staff. We managed to rescue 62 kilos during that day and 220 kilos of all the food that was not suitable for human consumption, we ensure that it went to the, uh, to the pig farm instead of going to the landfill. So that was, that was a pretty exciting and I would say um, a pretty encouraging sort of result that we can achieve just on, on one event. Another uh, uh, slide uh, uh, to conclude is uh, the partnership that we have had uh, with TSET in Thailand in particular, government uh, uh, driven sort of initiatives with incentive schemes uh, for hotels and convention centers uh, that uh, we have been uh, designing and, and helping to, uh, to implement. And those are the type of, of results that could be achieved when the, the, uh, the public money is, uh, is targeted and I would say uh, conditioned to certain criteria that are verifiable, addressing the issue of food waste and helping those professionals uh, uh, to improve their operation, it's a win for everyone. It's a win for those that have, uh, have it uh, implemented. It's a win for the, for the government that know the money is well spent. And of course, it's a win for our planet uh, where we can have drastic uh, reduction in terms of, of carbon emission uh, generated by this, this type of, uh, of operation. This is, the, uh, this is a quick overview. I wanna leave enough uh, time for, for Q&A. Uh, I wanted to give you that, uh, that overview uh, room. The, uh, the floor is yours and, and, and uh, happy to get any, any question that you may have. Okay, thank you so much, Benjamin. I'm not sure if um, everyone can see us now. Um, yes, thanks for the insightful um, presentation. I read some comments already, which um, said that was very insightful for them as well. So thanks yep. for that. Um, yes, please submit questions if you have. Uh, we got two or three so far, so we will jump right into it, I would say. Right, Benjamin? Yeah, please. <laughs> okay. Um, and so let me start with the first question that we have. 
Um, um, hi, Benjamin. Thanks for the excellent presentation. I wonder whether you also look into food waste within the supply chains. Can you hear me properly? Okay. Uh, does the benchmarking and certification system um, consider where food is bought and what kind of food is bought? Uh, okay, two tiers uh, questions. So no, uh, for now we are working on everything. Uh, uh, I would say everything from the hospitality sector, uh, food services. Um, we are uh, kind of looking at uh, a supermarket, but it hasn't been uh, any any uh, tangible uh, uh, project uh, so far. So. I would say, well, looking at the uh, the number of players and the amount of work uh, ahead of us, uh, that's already uh, <laughs> it. It keeps us busy. I, I would put it this way. Um, for the second part of your question, uh, the answer is no. The uh, they are they are um, they are so many. It's a, food waste is a complex. It's a complex issue. If you look at big hotels, for instance. Um, big hotels uh, may buy up to 2,000 different type of ingredients to do their food, uh, food offering. So to be able to track what is the environmental impact of the sourcing of each of those ingredients, it's just like financially not viable uh, and, and practically speaking, not, not an option knowing how um, little interest the entire industry has so far on this on this issue unfortunately we as i said we have been focusing non-stop on what are the financial benefits because all the environmental benefits is something that is uh, of complete non-interest uh, once you have a proper conversation um, yes there are policies in place uh, it helps to align with corporate policies or, or government policies but, uh, but it's not what drives uh, businesses uh, in this sector. I'm not putting everyone in the same basket. I'm saying, well, 90% of them. Uh, so no, we can't go to that level of details. I wish, and I wish this could happen in the context of collaboration with uh, research institutes, uh, and of course, with the right uh, necessary uh, funding to be able to go that much into in depth in, in the analysis. Okay, thanks. Um... Questions are coming in. Um, here's one which asks, uh, how can we encourage five-star hotels to be more ethical when the food waste money is included in the food price? So, How can we encourage five-star hotels to be more responsible when? About the food waste money um, included to be included in the price for food, basically. Not sure to understand that question. I guess, well, just, well, we'll keep it to the beginning of the question. How can you influence five-star hotels? Well, as a, as a customer, first, like, uh, share, share your expectations. I think that uh, the industry has been very slow in, in addressing that issue as well. There is always the push and the, and the pull factor, right? And I think that on the consumer side, uh, uh, what we see as very encouraging signs is, is that hotels uh, like those markets that are implementing the, uh, the pledge on food waste see a positive response from, from uh, diners, from the, the consumers. And I think there has been a drastic change into what are the, uh, who are those diners and what are the expectations in 2020 compared to the 1990s. And unfortunately, there hasn't been a lot of, of um, I would say, uh, deep studies about what could be the added, added value of offering responsible food. And this will depend on the, on the different market, right? But in terms of differenti differentiation factor, what we see as as as, as well very encouraging. For instance, Singapore, uh, one of our partner, uh, uh, the, uh, the the Grand Hyatt, uh, the chef uh, Chef Lucas is 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 adamant. Is like, well, we have been we have been doing a serious shift on sustainability, and, and business has has clearly uh, benefited from it. Maybe it's a market that is a bit more mature than other market in Southeast Asia. Uh, but uh, if we look at the big picture, this is coming, and and, and millennials are going to outnumber the uh, the boomers within 2025. Those millennials have very different expectations. Okay. Um, before I continue with the questions from the audience, I have one because you just mentioned it. Do you have some insights or some information about how has food waste changed in the past few decades? Is it has it grown like or is it reduced since? Like, do you have any numbers? 
now on uh, on uh, looking at such a such a uh, uh, i would say looking back that that far away no mm -hmm. and that's that's one of the reason why why we decided to uh to uh, to spend all our energy on it is is as well because it was such a uh it, it was such a, a, a an, an unexploited or, or mm -hmm. an understudied topic Okay. And that's what triggered our interest in, in, initially to say, hold on, nobody is looking at that issue. So even now, a government are trying to get a good estimates of the amount of, of food being wasted. The FAO is talking about half, uh, 30 percent. Uh, some other are saying, no, it's more than that. It's like 40 percent at least. Some countries are saying that they are wasting uh, probably 50 plus percent of all the food that is produced. So that's one of the challenge is to be able to have reliable metrics and especially uh, when you when you take uh, take it from a from I would say a global perspective. Okay, thanks. Um, next question. Um, thanks for your insightful presentation once again. Uh, many countries have very strict hygiene regula regulations, making food waste reduction difficult. Um, how can this be balanced? The uh, uh, I wouldn't I wouldn't uh, necessarily uh, tie uh, hygiene and food waste uh, that closely. Um, there are of course uh, uh, some some uh, uh, legislation or even like some industry standard that uh, influence the uh, the amount of food being wasted. Uh, but if we look at really like the hospitality sector, um, one of the key challenge with the hygiene uh, hygiene aspect is related to buffet. Uh, of course, nothing coming back from the customer can be done beside like uh, feeding animal or transforming it, but uh, or preventing it at the first place. But in terms of hygiene, it's mainly an issue of what is happening in the kitchen, in which case, uh, anyways, everything is done usually according to very strict standard. So uh, uh, hygiene is, is taken into account, but I would say wouldn't have direct incidence on the amount of food being wasted at that level. But where it could is on the on the buffet waste, and on the buffet waste, uh, uh, knowing that it represents for for hotels between ten to fifteen percent of all food waste, it has some sort of an impact, but it's not it's not drastic. There are some some things, of course, that end up in the bin uh, that are still perfectly fine, perfectly edible, and and rather safe. But then, indeed, you have those those standards that come into uh, into play, especially in time of COVID. Uh, where where it cannot be compromised, but it's not it's not that uh, that drastic, I would say. Okay, thanks. Um, we're still getting questions here. Um, one is talking about how food waste in developed countries can be systematic. Like, what? How could food waste be systematically reduced in developed countries? So this is a this is a point that we cover in uh, during our, our full course on, on, on food waste prevention is uh, especially the, the first module is when we look at the uh, the food waste from a global perspective, and there are serious uh, I would say pretty interesting differences between what are the different reasons uh, of food loss and food waste. Food loss is what is lost uh, before uh, before I would say retail, and food waste is from retail all the way down to the to the household level. Uh, and the, those those reasons varies dramatically between developing countries versus so-called developed countries. Um, so, for instance, if you look at uh, uh, um, uh, Northern Africa and uh, uh, a great deal uh, Sub-Saharan uh, Africa, a great deal of food waste happening at the post-harvest level. Um, so, post-harvest level and uh, 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 storage manufacturing. Is the biggest chunk. That's where a big, big uh, uh, chunk of all food waste is actually happening. If you look at uh, Oceania or, or North America, uh, forty percent. No, sorry, sixty percent of all their food waste is actually happening from the consumer. So there is huge discrepancies depending on on where you are. So usually the um, the issue for developed countries is at the post harvest level, at the manufacturing transportation level where a great deal is actually lost before the food can actually reach uh, the supermarket or the, uh, the, uh, the consumer. Um, this is regarding the certification that you talked about in the presentation. Uh, which is the third party doing the certification, the pledge certification? 
So third party verified certification process. So the pledge on the pledge on food waste. Um, well, the third party is verifying the compliance uh, of the uh, the restaurants that are implementing the pledge. So you have 95 criteria. They have to show that those criteria are uh, respected and to show those uh, this, this uh, you need to provide evidences. Uh, so online platform um, gives you access to all the 95 criteria. Those criteria are then broken down to those seven key pillars that I presented earlier. And you have guidance about what are the expectations, well, definition of the criteria, and then guidance about what are the expectations from the auditor. The auditor, once the restaurant, uh, uh, let's say, is ready for the, uh, for the audit, they submit their request, and then the auditor will verify that uh, for each of the 95 criteria, the restaurant is in compliance or not. So it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's I would say, a, a rather classic uh, uh, auditing system to verify that your claims are, are backed up by, by evidences and that those points can be validated to reach, uh, to reach a certification and then reach different levels mm -hmm. out of 100. Okay, thanks. Um, I don't, I'm not sure if you answered this during the, um, during the presentation, but how long does this whole certification process usually take? For? It takes between, uh, between three to five, six months depending on uh, how fast the team is implementing, depending on how much is already being done, and depending on how well documented the existing procedures are, are, are uh, how well it is already uh, documented. So yeah, between, between three to six months, I would say. Okay, okay. Um, okay, I think the question wasn't fully answered for the person asking. Um, do you have, so what's the name of the organization doing the certification process? Is it? Is it like? Um, what is the name of the accredited organization that does the uh, the audit? Yes. Um, I need to check. It's based in uh, in Hong Kong. Okay. Um, we can we can answer that. Like, uh, yeah. Whoever is asking the question, uh, <laughs> we'll answer that later. <laughs> okay, we um we still have a few minutes. Are you okay to answer a few more questions? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um. How do you normally implement a food uh, waste monitoring system in the hotels? Um... So very uh, uh, good question. Um, actually, the way we have been uh, re rethinking, uh, redesigning the uh, the system is to be able to uh, to offer this this solution as a standalone. So there are several components. Uh, one component is a, is a do it yourself uh, a food waste monitoring toolkit which is some sort of a guideline book that would explain about what are the basic requirements in terms of equipment, from the, from the scale to the bins, uh, what sort of tablet you need to buy, so Android device, how do you do the setup of your tablet, what are the color-coded uh, different categories of food waste that you should uh, uh, use, uh, and how does a, a, a typical food waste monitoring, uh, uh, what we call a recording point, uh, should be set up and, and look like, and then what is the procedure. So uh, it's uh, it's uh, it's pretty uh, pretty st pretty straightforward and very very low investment uh, to have an ongoing uh, system in place. Thanks. I think this one is an inter interesting question, but um, so this one is asking: Do you believe that food waste should focus more on the impact of the environmental aspect uh, rather than on the financial aspect when you have the whole topic of food waste? Well, it depends on whom you, who you're talking to, right? Uh, <laughs> as I mentioned, uh, talking to professional in the industry, uh, beside those, uh, those, uh, um, I would say, a few percentage of of uh, of, uh, of professional that got it. Uh, why is that a problem? And and that finance shouldn't be the the only driver for change. Um, then, uh, uh, then it's uh, it's good to put forward the benefit of of, uh, of minimizing or preventing food waste. But the uh, the the very large majority of, of professional and decision makers in the industry today still don't care. I mean, it's just uh, speaking bluntly and indirectly. Uh, we we are, we have been seeing in the past some some. Uh, proposing some solution that 100% subsidized by the government, where there is literally no cost for the beneficiaries, and and you always have all sort of, of excuses for for not doing it, that may be related to uh, you know uh, people are afraid of change, 
uh, people are happy to repeat what they have been always doing. Uh, it's it's much easier. There is a there is a fear for transparency uh, that is as well uh, one of the key components. It's much easier to not know because once you know, you need to deal with it, right? So this is something that we see on and on and on. And uh, so I wish we could have a discourse when we are speaking business to business, uh, taking this into account, but it never weighs in their decision-making process. So we just focus on what is the financial impact because we know that we have this, uh, this uh, positive externality, which is, which is a, a lighter uh, um, environmental impact. Okay, thanks. Uh, I think we'll do two more questions for today. Um, so this one goes back to the one of the first questions I asked. The person has specified it a bit more, and it's about the cost of food. So um, I think what this person wants to know is like, ho ho I would say hotels um, in this case, normally already um, calculate the cost of food waste into their pricing for food um, to the customer. So do you think because of that, um, they are not so interested in implementing the process of food waste. The, uh, the, uh, um, in order to integrate the cost of food waste in your, in your costing, uh, you, need to have a, a, you need to have a solid uh, initial understanding about what is your food waste. And that's, that's not the case for, for the, uh, the vast majority of, uh, of professionals. I'm not saying 100%, it's, it, it would not be accurate, but um, uh, uh, the, uh, what we see uh, systematically is that what is the cost of food waste out of your overall uh, uh, food cost is, is never an answer that they have at hand. Uh, it's always estimation that they heard from other, uh, other professional or similar segment or, or, or their competitors or, or colleagues. But um, except those that have comprehensive food waste monitoring system or those that have been through detailed audits, food waste audits with a clear uh, uh, categorization of their food waste where you apply the strict methodology on what is the cost of food waste for each of those moment of occurrence based on the, uh, the pricing of your ingredients and uh, related to the cost per kilo, uh, then it's, it remains estimations if you haven't gone through that process. Okay, thank you. And the last question for today, um, do you have any, can you suggest any monitoring systems for small businesses in the hospitality industry that maybe don't have the means to access the big analyzing softwares that are available? Yeah, the, uh, the, the FIT, Food Intel Tech, this is why we designed it for small businesses. So the, <laughs> the, the restaurants that are now taking it uh, in, in, uh, through this project with GIZ, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, the cost to run it is, is minimal, is, is like a couple of coffee per day. Um, so that's, that's why we designed it this way. So it doesn't exclude all those small businesses and small restaurants, I would say, that have, uh, that have uh, uh, let's say, 30 covers uh, up. It's, uh, it's uh, something that pays back for itself very, very quickly because it's, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a minimal uh, investment. So the, uh, yeah, that's how I would answer it. Okay, thank you. Um, and the last question from my side would just be, what's your... Yeah, how do you see the future regarding to food waste? Like, are you positive? Do you think like people will definitely um, like pick this topic up and focus on it in the next years? Or do you think it's still like a difficult fight to, to fight basically? I think, I think the same way I, I, would, I would draw a parallel with the, uh, the elections in, in general in our <laughs> democracy, uh, things, things should come from the civil society. Uh, so in that case, from the consumers. Consumers have a tremendous power to, to, uh, to disrupt the way uh, businesses are, are, are run. And, uh, and if consumers are demanding transparency, are demanding responsible practices, then businesses will adapt or die. But now the demand is like, oh, it would be nice if, or what about, uh, instead of saying, guys, I won't spend my money with you if you don't have verified uh, by external party sort of, of system in place to show that you have all the right preventive measures in, uh, uh, in, your, in your operation. So that's, that's how I would, I, would, I would put it. 
this being said, uh, so consumers as a massive, massive power regulation, uh, for sure, we see like in Europe, uh, all across the change of legislation to, to, uh, to uh, oblige uh, businesses to report on food waste, which is certainly going to help. Um, am I positive? Uh, I s I've seen a lot of changes over the past seven years. Uh, recently, it's really becoming a topic and everybody can really relate to, uh, to, uh, to this topic of food waste it's as well, why, why we really make it our, our expertise. But I, I believe in, in people changing systems uh, rather than, than the other way around. So. Okay, thank you so much, Benjamin. Um, yes, this is the end of our webinar. For anyone who still has any questions, please feel free to reach out to Benjamin directly. Um, the, do you want to repeat the email address one more time? Yes, uh, contact at lightblueconsulting.com. Okay, we'll also put it in the chat box for anyone who wants to um, yes. send an email. You can also send an email to us, membership at pala.org. We're always happy to forward anything. Um, and with that, I would say thank you so much. Uh, here you see the, the membership at PADA email. Um, thanks, Benjamin, for this insightful presentation, for spending the time and answering all these questions. Um, and that's it for today. Thank you for tuning in, everyone. We hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you have any feedback, as I said, please send us an email, reach out to us. Um, and then I would say, I'll see you again soon. Oh, and before, yes, before we finish, our next webinar is um, next week. I will, it's with BBC, it's on the, we'll double checking. I'm asking my colleagues which, which day is it. Uh, it was supposed to be tomorrow, but we postponed it to next week. Um, all the information can be found on pada.org. Um, it is on the, 18. Okay. But please check the website, pada.org. We have all the webinars and upcoming events there. Please feel free to register and join us for upcoming webinars as well. And with that, thank you again, Benjamin. Thanks for your time. Thank you. If I can say just the last word for those that are oh. still around, uh, we are running those uh, our full course on food waste prevention uh, on a regular basis. So if, uh, if interested, please, uh, please do reach out uh, to dive into this topic of, of food waste. It would be a pleasure to have you on board. Definitely. Please do so. Um, and wishing everyone a good day or a good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are. And we hope to see you at um, the next webinar. Okay. Sounds great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.